Alright, hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be doing Greek vases. So let's get going. Alright, I'm really excited to do this project. They look so cool. Uh, this is one from a long time ago, but we're going to make it 10 times better, obviously. But let's get going. So over here on my desk, I have some examples for you guys of different types of Greek vase shapes and how they compare and also some Greek patterns right here. I'll leave the Greek patterns up for you guys if you guys want to see. But if you do want to see the different common shapes and sizes of different types of vases, uh, I highly suggest you pause the video because I'm about to take it away in a little bit. So anyways, let's just go over a couple of these. I found this online. Uh, so these are actually kind of cool. They all have really cool names, very Greek names, obviously. Uh, so this one's called Amphora, Pelik, Pelik, I don't know. Uh, Cal Calyx Crater, Stamnos, a Hydra. This tall one's called like a Lutro Forest. Nice, a Labies, Kylix. Uh, a Cantharos. These are all looking really cool and I wish I could do all of them but I do want to just choose one but for you guys I can show you guys some basic shapes that we can do in order to make this vase. So this one's a kind of basic one. This one kind of looks more like the uh, has like a big bottom and it kind of has like a weird neck on top. Uh, this, this one's more of an amphora. It just has no handles. But if you want to add handles then great. It's just a little bit harder to do but other uh, is that. So anyways um, you can do the bug technique I taught you guys uh, from the last video where you kind of just like, rub the crayon that way you can just keep it in the sketchbook but for me uh, I did oh, we're gonna do something a little bit different within that so over here I'm gonna put this aside I'll put this base thing aside as well I want to show you guys what I did so over here on my sketchbook I kind of drew a frame I was gonna do it here but um, it's a little bit better on color paper. I don't have color paper here at home. I mean, I do, but I don't have brown in particular. So I made my own. So here's my brown paper I made. Uh, I'm going to turn it over this way so the streaks go this way. And I think this will be a great opportunity to do my own base of my choice. So first of all, if you have color paper, then great. I'm going to show you guys a technique what you can do if you do have construction paper. Or if you just want to kind of do what I did, this color piece of paper, uh, brown. Uh, you can do that and I'll show you guys what you can do. So anyways, first step, when you have your fake or real construction paper, you're gonna fold it in half. So I'm gonna fold mine like this. I shouldn't let me fold it the other way. Make sure my color's on the inside. There we are, I'm gonna fold it long ways, like so, hot dog style. And then what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna draw my face, but I'm gonna make sure that it has a nice sturdy bottom. So I'm gonna draw a little dot right there. So do I want like a big bottom or like a thin neck? It doesn't matter to me, so I'm gonna try my best here. I wanna go like this, curve up and curve out. There we go. So now I'm gonna close the top. And I think I might, you know, I might edit it a little bit. Why don't I go in more? Yeah, that might look a little bit better. Now I'll kind of create a little bit of an up lip and go across. All right, so now I have half a base. Notice how I did it with the portion that I'm gonna cut out is, uh, sorry, the portion that I wanna fan out and repeat itself is over here. So over here is where the crease is and here is where the opening is. I'm not really explaining this well, but um, that's how it is. So the opening's over here. And uh, so if the opening's over here, that means the vase will open this way. So you wanna make sure that it's curved the correct direction. Curved the correct direction. That's what I meant to say. Anyways, let's cut it out. Let's see what happens. Here I go. I'm going to start from down here. Now I'm going to cut just like so. I'm going to avoid my mess up line. So I'm so glad I did it on the back because I knew I would mess up. And then they go straight across. Boop, like that. All right. There we go. Ooh, it's a little bit big. I might as well cut off a little bit of the bottom. There we go. All right. Let's see what happens when I open it. Whoa, that's so cool. All right, here's my vase. It looks pretty neat. And then all I gotta do now is copy some Greek patterns on it, making sure I go horizontal. Now, hey, uh, say for instance, Mr. Mill, I don't wanna do like this project right here. I don't wanna cut it out. You can do this on just normal sketchbook paper. You just gotta do the same thing that we did last week with the bugs. All you gotta do is fold your paper in half like this. So you have the symmetry line, the line of symmetry that we talked about earlier. And then all you're gonna do is draw half a vase. So over here, maybe I'll draw 
the bottom of the vase. I will curve up and out like this. Maybe at this point, since it'll be a little bit harder for other kids, I'll want to draw a handle maybe. Here's my cool handle, just like so. Kind of curves out like that. Awesome. Maybe I want to create some lines here. As a matter of fact, when you're doing this type of technique, you can technically kind of do the Greek patterns already, and then it'll just get mirrored if you rub it correctly. So let's just try one. Let's see if it works. So why don't I do um, this one right here? Ooh, this one looks really hard. Why don't I draw the line right there at the bottom? And it looks like what they did was kind of go all the way across, and they kind of made like little G's like this. That's a kind of cool pattern. Alright, let's do another one. Ooh, that one's really cool looking. Why don't I just divide my paper in half again? And then I'm going to kind of create these little swirls here. Just like so. Alright, let's see what happens if I mirror a little bit. But before I do that, let me just trace over my vase a tad bit. Or a couple more times. Just so I can see if it worked or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace a couple of these lines over again. Just like so. And then I'm going to close it. And just like the bug technique, I am going to rub my paper and see if it transfers over. So here we go. So I'll go like this. I can kind of see through my paper so I can kind of get a gist of where I should be rubbing. And for good measure and for good luck, I am going to turn my paper over and rub on the other side as well. Oh, this is not working out. <laughs> It's a little bit harder when the paper's already attached to the sketchbook. But I'm trying my best here, guys. Alright, so I'm gonna open it up and see if it worked. If it didn't work, it's alright. It's art. But I'm pretty sure it did. So let's try and open it. Oh, look at that! <laughs> I don't have to draw the rest of the vase because it already did it for me. But obviously, I gotta do more patterns, but it looks really good. So, again, this is a little bit easier if you wanna do the bug technique, but if you wanna do the cutting technique, like how I did over here. You do have to end up drawing everything, unless you do like the whole rubbing technique again. So here's my example like this. So here's my swirls. Close the paper. Rub it a little bit. There we go. So it does work still, but not as good. Because it's construction paper or fake construction paper. So you might have to go back and uh, do your own patterns here. So here's my G pattern again. So you might have to just go back and just do it yourself like this, all the way across. But honestly, I think this other way, the one that I did over here on the sheet of paper, I think this way is a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going and I'll see you guys at the very end. So let's get going. So uh, let's see, I'm going to keep doing some more Greek patterns here. Let's see what else we got. Oh, I like this one. It's the first one's kind of like an upside down L. That's pretty cool. Nice thick black line. Let me fill that in. Like so. What else can we do? Ooh, I like this wavy one. That's pretty neat. It looks like there's a nice wavy one above it, like this. And that becomes a nice thick pattern, like so. Alright, I'm gonna keep going. Let's see what else we got here. Looks like there is a plain zigzag. That's pretty neat. Follow that with more zigzags. Uh, this is cool jigsaw pattern. Before I did that, let's do a stripe. Let's do this one on top somewhere. Oh, I forgot about these ones right here too. There's a couple good ones here. Alright. This is a little bit more hard. Let's do another one of these ones. 
probably start rubbing again. There we go, I'm gonna close it. Use my marker. So this is my ability. Rub it as hard as I can. On all sides, just like so. For extra measure, I'm going to fold it the other way and rub again. And then hopefully it turns out real good on the other side. Alright, let's take a look by opening it. Wow, it's looking pretty good so far. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue drawing the other half of it the best as I can. So here we go, across the board, down. So now I'm just kind of retracing my steps because I already drew one side, but now this side looks kind of faded. So I'm going to finish it off with some more detail. I could put patterns in the handle, but I think I'll leave it. I might put a couple stripes here and there. Um, I don't, why don't I rub those in? Just so I can be nice and even with my design. Just so I know where they are. There we are. At least now I know that there's two right here. Two right there. This is looking really great. I don't want to go overboard, so if I don't have time to finish this, I won't. But it looks like I'm good on time right now. If I have to speed up the video, I will. But I think I'm doing pretty well. Alright, this is looking fantastic, if I don't say so myself. I couldn't make this super exact by really coloring it in, but um, I kind of like the faded look, kind of. The faded looks kind of look, it looks kind of neat. Alright, let's do a couple of these lines here. Alright, let's get these go the opposite way. Alright, I think I'm pretty much done. Now, if the rubbing technique is too hard for you guys, you don't have to do that. Um, there you, go. Uh, you can also just draw the patterns normally. Just look at how I have over here on this one right here. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, project. If you guys want to color it with other colors, you can. Uh, but I'm going to leave mine black and white to symbolize the Greek patterns a little bit better. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next one. Bye-bye.